In this cold weather, finding warmth gives us comfort. In this episode, we will explore the beautiful islands of the Caribbean and immerse ourselves into its clear waters, white sand, and radiant sun. Join me in this local journey through Latin America. Carlos Pacheco was born in the Dominican Republic and now lives in British Columbia. He will introduce his home country while showing us the process of making mofongo, a staple Dominican dish. I am originally from the Dominican Republic. Well, Dominican Republic, it's, in lo it's located in an island called Hispaniola. It's uh, in the Caribbean Sea. Uh, in the north, we have uh, the Atlantic Ocean, and in the south, we have the Caribbean, the Caribbean Sea. We have 30 provinces and a national district, which is the capital. Uh, our capital city is called Santo Domingo. There are many uh, ethnic groups in our country. Our country is a mix uh, between mainly the, the Spanish, which uh, we were a colony for many years, since 1492 until uh, 1812. Uh, also, the Taino people were a very important group for us. Uh, they uh, didn't, they are not with us nowadays anymore due to the colonial past. The Taino are indigenous people of the Caribbean who inhabited what is now called Cuba, Jamaica, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic, along with Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. The Spanish invasion decreased the number of Taino people. However, this didn't prevent the culture from leaving its islands, at least in the culinary field. The Taino cultivated cassava, sweet potatoes, corn, beans, and other crops, which are still found in many Caribbean countries today. But also the Africans uh, were, our, uh, were a very important group for, for our culture, that is part of what it, we are to nowadays, of course. Our country's currency has the same name as many other currencies in Latin America. It's called peso. Uh, peso Dominicano. It's like different than other currencies. It's not the same, but uh, yeah. Well, there are plenty of dishes that our country is known for. Mofongo is a dish that we share with other countries like in Puerto Rico, but uh, it's also very uh, well known in the Dominican Republic. Uh, it, is, it consists mainly in uh, fried plantains with uh, chicharron, which is uh, pork skin. Uh, then we smash it and uh, mix it with uh, garlic and, uh, and, and uh, salt and, and oil and other things. And you can, sh you can uh, eat it with anything else that you like. In our case today, we had it with some, uh, with some red onions. Uh, first, the plantains, the green plantains, are not very easy to find here. So uh, if you find them, uh, you have to uh, shop them in, uh, in like in small pieces, maybe uh, one and a half in inch uh, length, right? So you have to uh, cut them, then you deep fry them. So you take the pilon, right? And you, first you put a little bit of oil. I rather use olive oil. Uh, you take a little bit of uh, garlic and you smash it. Uh, 
uh, you put some salt, pepper, and uh, some bacon if you like. If you like it, uh, you smash it there, and you start smashing it all together there until it gets into a paste. For me, um, well, I used to have this dish, honestly, my personal uh, relationship with this dish, I used to have it uh, very often when a family uh, member used to come to visit us uh, there. So it has a family meaning to me. Oh, by far our national sport is baseball. Uh, has been like that since cockfight was not like the most important sport back in the day. But uh, yeah, easily baseball is the most common sport in the Dominican Republic. That's why you can find many baseball players from the Dominican Republic playing in the Major League Baseball. Uh, also, basketball is growing a lot in football and also female volleyball, it is very big in the Dominican Republic. Internationally, our country is well known for tourism. Uh, a lot of people just go there for, for going to the beach, having a good time, a good sun, sandy ocean vacation. Like there are many, plenty of things that our country has to offer apart from that. Since many people go there to go to the beach, uh, mainly Punta Cana. And Puerto Plata are very common, but also the colonial zone in the Santo Domingo city. It's, it's pretty nice to walk around and see the city. Uh, Paraguacoa and Constanza are pretty nice towns as well. They are in, like in the mountains, so the weather is not like freaking hot like everywhere else. So uh, yeah, yeah. As some might know, Puerto Rico is an island territory of the United States. Therefore, all Puerto Ricans are Americans. This means that there aren't a lot of Puerto Ricans in British Columbia. However, this doesn't stop us from getting to know this beautiful island. So let me give you a brief overview of Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is located in the Caribbean Sea, east to the Dominican Republic and west to the Virgin Islands. Puerto Rico has 78 municipalities that are similar to counties. They are divided into eight regions. Some of the largest municipalities are San Juan, which is considered the capital city, Bayamón, Carolina, and Ponce. Puerto Rico has a diverse ethnic composition comprising of African Americans, white Spanish Europeans, and the Taino people who are indigenous of the Caribbean. The two official languages in Puerto Rico are Spanish and English. However, Spanish is more widely spoken than English. Puerto Rico has a rich and diverse cuisine that reflects its cultural heritage. Some of the typical dishes include arroz con guandules, rice with pigeon peas, is a staple dish that is often served with roasted pork. Mofongo, deep fried green plantain, is a mashed plantain dish that can be stuffed with meat or vegetables. Lechon asado, roasted pork, is a dish that is marinated with herbs and spices and cooked over charcoal. 
asopao, rice soup, is a soup that can be made with chicken, shrimp, lobster, or beef. Puerto Rico has many tourist attractions that appeal to different interests and preferences. Some tourist attractions include Old San Juan, a historic district that preserves colonial architecture, museums, and cultural events. El Yunque National Forest, a tropical rainforest that offers hiking trails, waterfalls, wildlife viewing, and scenic views. Flamenco Beach is a stunning beach with white sand, clear water, and coral reefs. Now that you know a little bit more about Puerto Rico, let's continue our journey through the Caribbean. Julio Montero is a Cuban-born dance instructor who has in-depth knowledge of Cuban salsa, which is actually called Casino in his native island. Apart from introducing us to Cuba, Julio will share his journey of bringing his culture to British Columbia. My name is Julio Montero. I was born and raised in the city of Santiago de Cuba. I was uh, born in the island of Cuba. Cuba is the largest island of the Caribbean. And um, the location would be right in between North and South America, but on the water. Right now, Cuba is divided into 14 provinces and one special municipality. Um, Cuba is in a way a, a multicultural nation, or it used to be a multicultural nation. That, but today Cuba is a country with you know, pretty much one defined identity. Um, Cuba is made up by a combination of uh, descendants of Europeans and Africans. There used to be a native population, but they, are pretty much, they have pretty much disappeared by today. We share similar dishes with, uh, with countries from the region. The, what we like the most, well, our staple is rice, black beans or beans in general, pork, we love roast pork, fried plantains, yuca, known as cassava as well, and, and also congri. Anyways, those, those are our, our dishes. So when I came, when I came to Canada, um, I, I always had in mind getting back to university and doing my degree and follow um, a professional path. But um, as soon as I came to Vancouver, I joined a dance group. I saw how much enthusiasm there was around Cuban culture. And it was just a matter of time until I started teaching my own lessons. I realized that it gave me a great deal of joy and in a way it was uh, an extension of what I had studied in university in Cuba because back home I went to school to become an English teacher but upon arriving in Canada um, I was like um, I don't think they need my teaching skills here I decided to um, attend university uh, studying sociology anthropology although eventually I, I did my major in languages but along that line, I found the joy of teaching people how to dance and I realized that I enjoy teaching, I enjoy um, you know, passing my, my culture on to people, I enjoy seeing um, the change that it made in their lives. What I grew up dancing in Cuba is called casino. We don't even use the word salsa in Cuba to describe our dance. I had to incorporate that word into my vocabulary upon coming to Canada. I realized that the word casino is not a commercial term and, um, you know, and, and here in Canada it can be a little bit confusing. Um, I cannot advertise casino lessons because I'm afraid I'll get the wrong crowd. I, I've had to adopt the term Cuban salsa 
um, in Anglophone Canada specifically. But um, that's how we call the dance back home, casino. Now, when you look at the, you know, the, the salsa scene internationally, you realize that there are a whole bunch of styles. But three are the ones that are the most popular. Cuban casino, LA salsa, and New York salsa. And I went to your um, dance class, and I noticed that it was in a circle. Some other classes that I've seen, they usually do like lines. So could you tell me like the difference, I guess, between doing it in the round circle and the lines? Yes. Um, linear salsa, well, it, the name says it all. You know, when you look at people dancing the so-called linear salsa, um, the pattern looks very back and forth. When you see someone dancing Cuban style, the pattern is very circular. Now that circle dance that you saw is called Rueda de Casino, Casino Wheel. And it's just a peculiarity of Cuban dance. It turns out that the way we dance can be adapted to a circle format without the dance losing its identity, without the dance losing its structure. It's just pure magic. So pretty much, um, I, am, I, I love culture. So what I like to teach is you know, cultural dances. I teach casino and I also teach, uh, I teach Cuban casino and I also teach Dominican bachata. Most of what I teach though, like the bulk of my work revolves around Cuban casino and also organizing social dance events where the music that we play is primarily Cuban music. People travel to Cuba primarily for two things, um, the, the climate and the culture. Some people just stick to the hotel life. You know, they go to the resorts and enjoy the beaches and, and, and the nice weather. But there are many people who go to Cuba because of the culture. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something. Um, when, when Cuba announced, when Cuba and the United States announced that they were going to um, you know, start a relationship again back in like 2016, there was this like panic. People started panicking that McDonald's, Starbucks, all that stuff was gonna start, you know, like popping up everywhere. But uh, when you look at the reality of what people go to Cuba for, um, everybody goes to Cuba to enjoy our capitalist past. What do you do in Havana? admire the, the cars, admire the American cars and get a ride on them and lots of pictures with them. Admire the architecture from before 1959 and from the colonial times. Admire the music of, of the Buena Vista Social Club style, which is music from nine, before 1959. Everything you go there to enjoy is stuff that has to do with, with that time. You know, even if the buildings are destroyed, you go there to like admire half destroyed buildings and imagine and, and, and try to imagine the greatness, you know, from back in the day. So that's a peculiarity of Cuban uh, tourism that, that is ironic in many ways because um, I don't understand why, you know, people worry about, um, you know, Cuba changing when all we need is change. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this beautiful tour of the Caribbean. In our next episode, we will finish the Central American tour with Guatemala and Panama. So don't miss out on these beautiful countries full of culture and delicious food in this local journey through Latin America.